They say adversity breeds ingenuity. So by that logic, the more impossible a situation seems, the more creative the solution needs to be. Especially if it's one that tries to work around certain rules. From getting around an airline's strict aviation laws to tricking children into eating their veggies, here are even more genius ways people manage to beat the system. Almost every airline in the world enforces the notorious no liquids over 3.4 ounces in carry-on baggage rule. This was imposed in 2006 after police uncovered an extremist plot to blow up seven planes mid-flight using explosive liquids disguised as beverages. Today, this makes bringing things like your own drinks onto a flight almost impossible. Small price to pay to not be blown out of the sky, I guess, but still kind of annoying, especially considering how expensive some airport stores can be. Fortunately, there's at least one stone-cold genius among us, if Twitter user Isaac Haxton's story is anything to go by. Back in 2013, he was stood behind a woman at airport security who was carrying a large bottle of frozen water. When the guards tried to take it off her, she argued that, technically, it wasn't a liquid. Now, I didn't know this, but according to America's Transport Security Administration, you can bring ice and frozen liquids onto the plane as long as they're frozen solid when presented for screening. They won't let it in if it's partially melted or like a slushy, but if she kept it completely frozen in something like a cooler through security, she shouldn't have had any problems. Outstanding move. But that's not the only way people have managed to get around this rule. I don't know why I haven't thought of this before, but this person, who clearly wanted to get their in-flight buzz on without paying extra for it, just bought many bottles of booze with them. While there's a cap on how much liquid you can have in a single container, you can bring as many, many bottles of booze as you want, providing they all fit into the one small see-through liquid bag you're allowed. Even so, assuming each mini bottle there contains roughly 50 milliliters, there's more than half a pint of liquor in that bag. I don't know about you, but as a lightweight, that'd be more than enough to last me through a flight. <laughs> Planes aren't the only places people try to sneak their alcohol into. Movies, sports games, pool sides, even just out in public. Not getting caught sipping something strong is a superior skill. Although, the guys over at Indestructibles turned this challenge into an art form with their baby flask. By hollowing out a plastic doll, drilling a hole into its head, and then inserting a water bladder so that the hose comes out the top, the doll is transformed into a watertight, functional flask. Then all you need to do is throw it into a holster and hey, presto, you've got a perfect baby. Not only that, but with all the forehead kisses you'll be giving it, you're going to look like a super attentive and loving parent. And if anyone does get suspicious, you can just say, shh, they're sleeping. Brilliant. But if you have a real child, you'll know getting drunk doesn't solve all your problems. Aside from all the screaming and poop, you also have to deal with their picky eating habits. Getting a kid to eat their vegetables is no easy feat, believe me. But a YouTuber by the name of Avid John found a way to hack his little picky eater after she refuses to eat the rest of her meal, Dad brings out what she really wants, chocolate. But just as she's ready to open up for the sweet treat, ah, the old bait and switch. The perfect technique to get your kid to eat their dinner and give them trust issues. 10 out of 10 parenting there. Speaking of a bait and switch, whoever designed this t-shirt definitely knows how to trick any wandering eyes. At a glance, the grid pattern on the foot is designed in a way that makes it look like this lady is sporting a decent set of, her lady lumps. But are you ready for a magic trick? When she turns side on, they disappear. What witchcraft is this? Before you get your pitchforks and torches out, this is just a hilariously clever optical illusion. No magic necessary. It uses an altered grid pattern design to jokingly add a little gravitas to all our flat-chested fellows out there. Look. Even guys can get in on the fun. Hey, hey, his eyes are up here. Unbelievable. Now I wouldn't mind if your eyes wandered over to that lovely pair of like and subscribe buttons down below. Hit them up and you'll never miss another installment of this series ever again. All done, amazing. What have we got next? There are few things as annoyingly inconvenient as when batteries run out in some devices, like a computer mouse or a remote control. You mean I have to get up out of my chair and change the channel by hand? Ugh. But if this photo is anything to go by, there might be a way around this. By slipping the battery into the slot sideways so that the positive end connects to the terminal where the other battery should go, apparently this completes the circuit and powers your device just fine. 
It's an impressive image, but I'm not sure I buy it. For a start, this mouse requires three volts of power, but this is a 1.2 volt battery. It shouldn't be enough to power the mouse on its own. So this is likely a fluke or some next level Photoshop, but you can have that little factoid free of charge. Have you ever pulled a sick day from work? Anyone who has will know it can be difficult to convince your boss that you're not faking it. Some will even ask for a doctor's note or a temperature reading. But one genius found a quick way around this by aiming an infrared thermometer at a pair of cooling flat irons, the temperature shot up to a spicy 103.4 degrees. Our sly sufferer then took a picture of the result and sent it to their boss, pretending it was their own temperature and that they were too sick to work. It looks legit. The only issue might be that with a fever as high as 103.4, their boss might be wondering why the heck they're not in the hospital. Ride-on mowers are fun, but after a while, they can get pretty repetitive and boring. If only there was a way to increase your mower's mowing capacity and reduce the time you're stuck on it, cutting line after line. Wait, look, someone's grandpa is on X Games mode. He has hooked six regular mowers up to his ride on like some sort of lawn loving reverse Santa. But hey, the mowers seem to be doing their job, giving him an extra wide cut. Talk about working smarter, not harder. Speaking of working smarter, there's a farmer over in East China's Jiangsu province with an invention you just have to see. The rice fields planted throughout this area are vast and need to be regularly sprayed with pesticides to prevent insects from getting to them. But disturbing the crops with heavy machinery could kill the plants, which is what inspired one farmer to invent this incredible contraption. It's a pesticide sprayer that's been hoisted up by helium balloons. While being gently walked over the crops, the nozzles on the tube can spray an area of 575,000 square feet per hour. That's enough to spray around 10 full-sized American football fields worth of crops every 60 minutes. Very rice indeed. If there's one thing I hate, it's arguing with my girlfriend. I can never win. What I think I might need to do is take a leaf out of the Searle family's book considering this is how they get around argumentative ultimatums. Go on, bro. If you walk through that door, we're done. If you walk through that door, if you walk through that door, we're done. Wow. Technically, he didn't walk. He rolled like a boss. I wonder if her wow at the end there was because she was so impressed by his logic. I mean, I doubt it, but you better believe I'm going to be using this to win arguments with my girl from now on. Don't you hate it when products have a little sticker that either voids the warranty or forces you to accept the end user agreement when it's broken? Well, when Reddit user Faux4J was presented with this seal on a software CD which read, breaking this seal constitutes acceptance of the end user license agreement, they decided they wouldn't be playing by those rules. They left the seal intact and proceeded to rip the CD out of the bottom of the case. Hey, the seal's been left intact. This is the physical version of not checking the I agree to the terms and conditions box. Okay, ladies, I'm sorry on behalf of all mankind for some of the messages you get online. I don't know how you cope, quite honestly. Although there's at least one girl named Denise who's found a way around some of the gross requests that men slide into her DMs. A man by the name of Marcus asks to see a pic of Denise in her bra. Real scumbag request there, Marcus. But Denise said okay, and then sent him this. Hey, he can't complain, he got exactly what he asked for, and more than he deserved if you ask me. If you're a gamer, you probably know that It Takes Two released in 2021, swept up a bunch of game awards, including winning Game of the Year, Family Game, Multiplayer Game, and many more. The only limitation with this super fun game is that, like the name suggests, it takes two players to play. Now Masahiro Sakurai, a world-renowned game dev and creator of the famous Kirby, couldn't wait to get his hands on the game. But at the time, he didn't have anyone to play it with. To get around this, he began experimenting with different methods of playing two controllers at once. I guess he really wanted to play. Sadly, it doesn't seem like he was able to crack this. But do you know anyone who can play two player games with just one set of hands? Let me know down in the comments. No matter where you go in this world, there'll always be some sort of bizarrely specific rule ready and waiting to ruin your fun. Take this sign for example, banning bikes, rollerblades, roller skates, skateboards, and scooters. Just how much does this guy hate fun? Well, not enough to stop this freewheeler. Doesn't say no unicycles, does it? Ingenuity one, fun police, zero. I love a good bath. 
I often relax and get clean while reading a book, messing around on my phone, or just listening to podcasts. But for all these choices, sometimes I wish I had a TV in my bathroom, just so I could play a game. The electrical hazards of that setup, yes, would be a nightmare, I know. But one guy found a way around this problem. He put on his game, set up his phone so it was facing his TV, then FaceTimed his iPad so he could play his game through the video link in the bath. Genius. Sort of. I can't imagine the lag was much fun. And wait, if his phone was facing the TV, how did he take this photo? Does this guy really have three devices with cameras but no handheld gaming console? Whatever floats your boat, I guess. If you have a homeowner's association, you're probably all too aware that they're real sticklers for the rules. For those unfamiliar with them, HOAs are private corporations that manage some neighborhoods enforcing rules so that everything is up to code while maintaining the area. So when this person received a complaint that a dying shrub on their property was ruining the neighborhood aesthetic, they had two options. Spend the day laboriously digging the thing up or find a way around it by using a can of heavy duty green paint. Working smarter, not harder. They chose the second option. Looks green to me. Guess I'm gonna be adding green paint to my gardening tools from here on. But that's not the only way people have worked around annoying HOA rules. One man was apparently told by his HOA that he wasn't allowed to install a pool in his backyard. But with the summer approaching, he needed a spot to chill out. And so, he built his pool. In his garage. Ha! Doesn't get the most sun in the world, but then I guess he doesn't have to worry about getting sunburned. And if the HOA have a problem with it, all he has to do is drop down the door. Problem solved. Now, kids can be dumb, but they can also be little geniuses when they really want something. Like this kid who really wanted to watch his videos while lying down, but didn't want to hold his iPad up. His solution? Place the pad on a glass table and watch it hands-free from below. Pure freaking genius. I think I just heard Einstein giving the kid a thumbs up from his grave. In 2021, the world was plunged into an ongoing global energy crisis. There's a severe shortage of energy, which is a problem that can't be solved overnight. Or can it? Yep, this guy figured out he could use the torch on his phone to power his solar phone charger, and in turn, power his phone. Infinite energy unlocked. Except not really. While you can charge some solar panels with artificial incandescent light, over time, some of that energy will be lost through heat and other phone mechanics. So while it's a fun short-term hack, it's sadly not sustainable. No infinite energy source today. In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Okay, I'm not really an art guy, but there's one Danish artist, Jens Hanning, whose work really shows the mastermind behind the masterpiece. In 2021, the Kunsten Museum of Modern Art Aalborg gave Jens $84,000 worth of Danish kroner to reproduce one of his older pieces titled The Average Yearly Austrian Income. It was exactly that, laid out and framed in real bills to put the average person's value into perspective. But Jens himself was only being paid $1,600 to make this, which ironically would have left him out of pocket after studio and framing costs along with staff salaries. So he decided to cleverly subvert the rules of his contract. After a few weeks, the museum staff received two large crates from Jens, but when they opened them, they were shocked. It contained two totally blank canvases, one a little smaller than the other, which Jens had ingeniously called Take the Money and Run. While he had a contractual obligation to return the money to the museum by the time the exhibition ended, he argued that if he did, the pieces would no longer be considered art and therefore he'd be in breach of the contract. Brilliant. The exhibition ended on January 16th and so far, Jens hasn't given the money back. I don't reckon he ever will. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. As someone who's received his fair share of parking tickets, I can safely say they're the most annoying type of fine you can get. Admittedly, I am terrible at parking and timekeeping, but I still wish there was a way to stop traffic cops from issuing me tickets. But according to Twitter, one person found a way to outsmart this system for years. How? By putting a fake ticket on their car. Back in 2016, TJ Azada, a former student of the University of Houston, claimed he'd placed an old ticket on his car, folded over so the time and date was obscured, so that university security wouldn't bother giving him a fresh one. Sounds smart, but I doubt this would work for any other type of parking tickets. Traffic cops all over the world check the timestamps of old tickets left on vehicles and won't hesitate to dole out another. Uniforms can be useful, although not everyone is a fan of them. 
that even if you hate their color, style, or fit, they can be used for pulling one over on unsuspecting people, something Darius Williams proved back in 2016. Dressed as a delivery driver, he entered a store in Prattville, Alabama with a large cart. He then loaded the cart up with cases of beer and soda and just rolled the cart out of the store. Security must have thought he was a legit delivery man there to restock some shelves, right up until he placed the crates in his car and drove away. Now, you might be thinking this is just one example of this store's security snoozing on the job, but Williams pulled this off successfully in at least three other stores as well. Who knew a single uniform could hold so much power? But uniforms can be used for fooling more than just store security. In that same year, two Australian men used a couple of blazers with fake emblems on them to pull one over on, get this, North Korea. Yep, the Hermit Kingdom was had by a couple of jokers from Brisbane back in 2016. Morgan Ruin and Evan Shea were on a polo tour in China when they decided, on a whim, to enter the North Korean Amateur Golf Championships. They signed up via email, claiming to be part of Australia's golf team, and even had a set of fetching green blazers made, complete with the country's emblem, to look the part. Now, usually anyone wanting to visit the secretive state has to go through an authorized pre-planned tour company. They perform several background checks to ensure the individual meets a strict set of criteria before issuing or denying their visa. But despite using a lie that anyone with Google could debunk in a matter of minutes, North Korea's officials welcomed them with open arms. For three days, they were wined and dined, chaperoned around the capital of Pyongyang on official tours, and were treated with the utmost respect. But their plan quickly fell apart when they hit the golf course, where they scored so badly they almost came dead last. Luckily for them, this wasn't really a serious sporting event, as the championships had been arranged by a tour company called Lupine Travel, who stipulated that literally anyone could come and compete, no experience necessary. So while the Aussie boys enjoyed their little prank, they were joined on the course by a couple of newlyweds who were outperforming them in their wedding getup. They returned home without issue, but once the joke was revealed, Lupine Travel weren't laughing. The company apparently demanded the pair return to the state and make an official apology on live TV for duping the system, but the pair obviously declined. These pranksters know a trap when they see one. Which of these geniuses do you think was the most creative? And have you ever slightly pulled one over on the system? Let me know your stories down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.